It looks like something from outer space. But this is actually one of the least explored places on our planet. You forget as a, as a human just how vast our oceans are. Just there's all this other world out there, uh, most of which we haven't documented. The deep sea makes up over 50% of Earth. And these creatures are new discoveries found in the depths of the Pacific Ocean. They look like an alien in some house. It is currently untouched by humans, but how long can it remain so? I'm here at the Natural History Museum. It's a treasure trove of specimens brought together to discover how life evolved. Today, they are still making important discoveries about life on this planet. A lot of the time in the deep sea, have people found things that we thought were extinct, thought they were long gone, and they've turned up in the deep sea, kind of just still there, doing their thing happily. The scientists have brought back weird and wonderful specimens, over half of which they believe are new to science, including this, the Barbie pig. Everyone thought the deep sea almost had nothing in it. We now know there's quite a lot of life down there, and this is one example of it. This is a really unique, really special specimen. This one is probably uh, what's called a Bathycrinus. So they're related to starfish or sea urchins, uh, although they don't really look like it. Uh, this one we have no idea. This is a really weird looking specimen, which is gonna take uh, quite a long time to work out what it is. And that's what they are doing here at the museum. You have to be very, very gentle with them. Scanning and cataloging all these new life forms. So why is it exciting news? First of all, it's probably a new species. It's also more important is that it gives us an idea of what's living in some of these places that we're interested in. So this is from a really deep part of the ocean, and we can't even begin to protect what we know is there without knowing what it is. And that's why scientists have just spent 45 days on a voyage to the Pacific Abyss to understand the implications of potential deep sea mining activity. We work between four to 6,000 meters depth. So it's really dark, very cold, and very low in nutrients for the animals. I really love this one. It's a beautiful base sponge. What do you think? This sponge was attached to this tiny nodule. That tiny nodule provides the enough uh, surface to the sponge attached to them and create this marvelous animal. These nodules don't only provide homes, but they also provide many of the rare metals that humanity is going to need. You see it's a kind of size potato but it's full of minerals, like manganese, nickel. So mining companies, they wanted to extract this in order to get the minerals for green technology. And the metals company is one of the first looking to do just that. The oceans are magical and we have to protect them. But the biggest risk to our oceans is acidification through global warming. So we have to address climate change. But to do that, we're going to have to build batteries, we're going to have to build solar panels and windmills and other forms of renewable energy. And the reality is that is going to require more and more metal. So we've got to get the metals from somewhere. So mining on land causes a great deal of damage to the environment. How can mining under the sea be any different? Well, it doesn't make sense that we're pushing into our most pristine biodiverse ecosystems called our tropical rainforests when there's a better solution. We're not saying there's zero impact because there's no such thing. But what we do know is that the impacts are a tiny, tiny fraction compared to the land-based 
alternatives. And we think this is the solution, Ruben. There is no perfect solution, but this week, the International Seabed Authority are meeting to decide whether to give deep sea mining the green light. What would be the impact of deep sea mining on these places and species? And for a long time, the deep oceans are really considered a, a wilderness, kind of immune, if you like, from human impacts. Uh, but not anymore. Now we need to consider the deep sea uh, as a resource frontier. Countries, nations, industry uh, are interested in going into these environments, maybe for oil and gas, for hydrocarbon extraction or minerals, uh, and finding things that humans need. Uh, that means we have to come up with conservation strategies, conservation solutions to do that in a way which is sustainable, and that's a challenge. It's fairly easy to, to put a monetary value on uh, the amount of nickel there is in a, in a, in a lump of ore. Uh, it's really hard to say what the monetary value of biodiversity is. Um, no deep sea mining in international waters is currently allowed under international law. So we have sort of a, a window, a sort of period, if you like, uh, to collect that information and, and make a kind of informed societal decision. The deep sea is the last great unexplored frontier on our planet. It is also the last vast untapped resource to be exploited. Society has a big decision to make. <laughs>